The 6.5 is on the road here at Supercomputing 2023 in Denver, Colorado. We are currently in the Lenovo booth where you can hear it is rocking and rolling around us. There's a ton of people. Dan, I may or may not have been stampeded last night waiting to get in this event. I mean, what's going on here? Is supercomputing and AI just that cool? I, I think it is. I know the word cool and uh, AI and accelerated computing computing and supercomputing probably haven't been put together in the same sentence yeah. in a long time. But I did stand outside. I was looking down on a crowded street here in Denver in front of the convention center of people trying to get into the building for the opening reception. Anything for some sweet potato fries. Exactly. But in all serious, Pat, AI and accelerated computing is in vogue. It's been a massive year for this technology. And this is where so much of the foundation of these LLMs and this these these you know next generation workloads and of course the advancements of space and all the things it starts here. Yeah, it is amazing too. And uh, I think I went to my first supercomputing conference about a decade ago, and it was all about flops, right? A certain type of compute, and then it shifted to not that flops is going away, but this combination of flops and AI, right? And that's I think why this has gotten bigger. And we've seen high performance computing, which was typically uh, national National labs and university labs being embraced by energy companies, being embraced uh, by pharmaceutical companies, being embraced, embraced by design companies to be able to do their work better and faster. So, and without further ado, oh, you're about no, to say I was this? just saying in the AI era, you got flops and tops. You know, oh we gosh. got flops and tops. You're always you know? coming up with a new one. I just want to say. By the way, and, and along the way, we are in the level because Lenovo is a market share leader in high performance computing. Uh, and I, I want to uh, introduce uh, two of our guests, uh, Giovanni with uh, Lenovo and Dieter with LRZ. Welcome to the 6.5, first time guest, but we're thrilled to have you here. Excellent, thank you very much for having us. Excellent. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. So let's start off talking about LRZ, roles and objectives that, you know, all about advancing supercomputing. Can you talk a little bit about the partnership uh, with Lenovo and how it's uh, going to help drive the next generation of of supercomputing? Sure. Uh, so LSE was founded in 1962, and the goal was to run big computers at that time. We're still running big computers, and we're doing it together with Lenovo, and Lenovo is building our leadership class system, so to say. The goal of LZ is we are a partner for the digital transformation. So we do anything for scientists, and we help them to do their daily work. And that really starts from the desktop to what we have as a big system and how to use it. And the real kind of intention is, what the, our, our metric is time to science. So the goal is that we really enable these scientists to get their leadership, their uh, enlightenment, their yeah. scientific breakthroughs through computing. So who can get access to the LRZ supercomputer services? Is it folks just inside of Germany? Is it EU? Is it, is it global? So LRZ is a German national HPC center, one of three, and we are providing access to these systems through a peer review uh, process. So a scientist submits a proposal, which is then evaluated on the technical merits, and depending on how good the science is that the scientist want to do, uh, he gets a certain allocation on time on the system. And these are what things that you would expect, uh, drug discovery, weather patterns, design, things we haven't even thought through yet? That, that's a very good question. In, in fact, we are very proud because we have all scientific domains. So we really go from astrophysics to zoology, kind of. And the important thing is, it's also not only the scientists that, that kind of know exactly on how to use these systems. We have those that we call the clickers, which kind of use the mouse for the scientific research, to those, I don't know, high energy physics people who, who take every bit and know what the processor is doing. You know? Cool. Talk a little bit about the partnership, Giovanni. Uh, it's really great to learn from Dieter here what they're focused on. But of course, you know, there are many companies, partnerships uh, are, have to be very strategic 
and and as they decide who do they want to build with, who do they want to invest with, who are we going to, you know, move forward and create the most advanced computing capabilities, they've chosen to build a deep partnership with Lenovo. Talk a little bit about kind of what's forming that partnership and how that partnership is developing. Yes. So LRZ for us is since many many years, you know, a, a very important partner, particularly of course with the German market. As, but as Dieter said, you know, they are they are also offering their services across the the, the markets. And from this perspective, you know, we are investing on our on our side as as Dieter and his team is investing. So we are looking to, into roadmaps. And for us, it's important. It's not just a one-off. It's a really investment on both sides, looking, understanding what are the, what are they looking for in regards of capabilities, also in regard of next generation of uh, of uh, CPUs and GPUs, of course. And so. I'm really proud to be honest to sit here now together with uh, with Dieter and talk about LRZ and, and our partnership. You said goes back many many yes. years. Could you uh, you had talked about the foundation in 1962? When did Lenovo step in? Oh, to the that's picture. a good question, uh, Dieter. I I have to say I do you do you, have, do you know exactly? I, I can, I can yes. tell you. So the, the what we did in 2012 is we got the first hot water cooled system, which was position four in the top 500, and that was IBM at that time. And yes. then came the transition. So it was the same team working for us. So I would say we started in 2012, 2012. more or less, That's great. working so together. That's a decade long yes. Uh, yes. Uh, relationship. Yes. That's great. So Dieter, I'd love to get your sort of more macro take. Uh, you know, it's great to hear about the partnership and the work that you're doing with Lenovo. Obviously, day in and day out now, you're seeing the interest the demand, the uh, national economic value that's being put on AI. Kind of how are you observing and how are you feeling that this kind of more broad market momentum for AI is changing the work that, that you're doing? Uh, absolutely, so the thing we have is we've just been installing uh, our latest system, SuperMOOC NG Phase 2, and that's a system that was really originally indicated to be an accelerator for HPC. But with the technology we have, it's also the perfect machine for doing AI, for doing large language models, and to really attribute to, to what we need to do in this day with the advent of all these AI things. And the good thing again is, this partnership also allows us really to kind of bring the latest technology to AI. And with SuperMOOC and G Phase 2, what we have been doing is, we have the first system that is really 100% hot water cooled. So it's not only the, the, the cores, the, the CPU cores, the GPUs, which are brand new Intel GPUs in that case, but it's also that the entire system, even the, the, the power supplies are hot water cooled. And the good thing is I'm really happy that we're working on this because we're also using this on our AI clusters. So the AI clusters have the highest density of what you can get of AI within one rack. And I think it's 144 yes. GPUs in one rack yeah. because of the technology yes. advancement that yes. we have been right. doing together. Yes. And LRZ in particular, you know, they, they have, uh, they put a lot of value in regards of energy efficiency. Right. And with warm water cooled systems, you can uh, save up to 40%. And think about, you know, on such an in installed base, when you can save 40% of energy costs, that's significant savings, you know, which then of course are they going to invest in different uh, infrastructure, in different architectures, yes? Well, yes. in fact, all the money that we are saving yes. is being put into buying a bigger machine. Yes. So <laughs> science profits yeah. from energy yes. efficiency. Well, it sounds like a virtuous cycle here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right? Uh, I, I have a technical question, uh, but it's a, it's a macro question. Uh, I talked a little bit in the run-up about uh, flops and AI. And, you know, technology is very rarely, we're going to stop doing one thing uh, and just do another, right? We saw this to analytics, to ML, to DL, now to generative AI. We're still all doing all four of those. And uh, we're still doing a lot of flops-based uh, computing, uh, but we're also doing uh, AI-based and generative AI. I'm curious as to, is it possible to put a percentage on the types of workloads, like AI versus flops? By the way, I'm expecting AI numbers overall to be low because it's, it's relatively new and also, uh, when we polled people last year, it, it was low then, and these things don't flip overnight. Uh, well, I would. Or are they? I, I would say we have seen dramatic increases in the last year. So the AI performance is great. What we have now, of course, we expect much more growth even. Right. But that's what we already see. 
And bringing these these things together really means for us that uh, we need to balance all these topics that you mentioned. And that's a tricky question. If you ask me how much percentage is ASPC, I would say I don't care, you know? My, my, I want the science to be done. And we, we need a system that is also able to kind of reflect all these requirements and, and support all these different things. Which is why I always say I don't care about the top 500. Yeah? Right. Because what I care is the next scientific breakthrough. It's, it's solving the problem that our society has today with the tools we have and putting them together in a system that, that helps us in science. Right. Well, Dieter and Giovanni, it's an exciting time. I want to congratulate you on all the progress in, in the partnership. This will be a big transitional year, and next year we can be sure, Pat, as we show up here, that there's going to be more, more flops, <laughs> there's going to be more tops, there's going to be more applications that are going to be driving the future. And I, and I kind of love to also see this this convergence that's going on because you got to, as you think about accelerated computing and supercomputing, and then all we're talking about in a lot of our, our conversations in labs around quantum, right. you're kind of seeing these forces coming together. And I think there's some really exciting things that are going to happen. And a lot of them will be announced and heard here at supercomputing. So Giovanni, Diener, thanks so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. 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 Everyone. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us here at Supercomputing 2023. It's great to be here in Denver at the Convention Center looking at all this technology. But for now, for this show, for Patrick and our guests, it's time to say goodbye. See you all later.